Welcome back to another video guys. In this video I'd like to wrap up our little world builder and just show you a really nice way we can get the data from our randomly generated units. Because what we've done so far, we've generated some random units in our game, we've saved their position and the rotation and what unit they are in our player preferences file locally on our machine. So now we want to get that data and actually put it in our script so every user can appreciate this, these positions, not just us on a random machine. So we can save the positions locally in our player preferences file. Now I want to extract that data. And to do that we can debug the C sharp code we need to generate those units in the game. I'm just going to explain what I'm going to do. So if we copy and paste this button, but I'm going to call it this time log positions. Okay, of saved units. And we can say debug log code, for example, as the method we're going to call. So I'm going to create this method now. And within this method we want to generate the C-sharp code needed for this script to actually um, instantiate these random units in our game. Okay, so to do that we can create a string, I'm going to call it debug string equals and to start this we can say forward slash forward slash do a comment if we like instantiate random generated units colon new line new line we could start it like that and once you've generated this code we can simply debug it out in our menu so debug string really nice technique to save some time if you're building big worlds with random units and let's just move this button down to 70 for example so just to demonstrate this works we have our new button I'm going to save these positions now in our player preferences file whoops didn't want to do that and log the positions so boom our variable of our generated C sharp code is now in our met log in our console here it is instantiate random generated units so let's go ahead and generate the C-sharp code. To do that we need to refer to our free saved arrays in our player preferences file. Let's just get the string array first. Let's do as quickly as possible. Units array equals player prefs x get string array and we called it worlds01 units. And then we got two vector three arrays positions array equals player prefs x get vector 3 array this time we called it world 01 positions and the last one was the rotations so let's just rotations rotations so we have the data from our file that's great so let's loop through it int i equals zero, i is less than, let's say units array length because all of these three arrays are the same length i plus plus so here's where we generate our code we can say debug log debug string sorry plus equals to add on to the string okay so we want to use the instantiate method here and here you can code any C sharp you like just a really quick way to, to write this code so instantiate let's say resources load so we want to wrap a string in another set of, of double quotes here so we need to escape some out so we can put slash speech marks so now the string itself does not end okay so let's refer to the units array at this index which points to the resource in our resources folder which is here plus and then we've entered the string again okay so let's just close it and we want to say type of game object here okay so that's the first thing we want to do the next thing is the position so new vector 3 and uh, very simple we, we're going to refer to the data in our positions array here so we can say plus positions array at this index dot x then enter the string again and put an f because this value is a float comma and then we can go ahead and do the x in the in the the Y and the Z, sorry. So I'm just going to paste it in actually. So here we go. So the Y and the Z. Running out of space. 
So after we've done that, we can close the array, uh, the vector three, that's good. The last thing is the rotation. I'm going to code the rotation on another line of code. So I'm going to put quaternion identity for now. Don't want to jump into quaternions. But in order to do this, we need to refer to this resource as a game object. So we can do variation unit i, just so they're a different name, equals instantiate and cast it as a game object. OK, so that's our line of code. I don't think there's any errors. I'm going to test this out firstly. So I'm going to say debug string plus equals new line, just so we can tidy up our debug log menu. So saving this out now. And let's jump into the debug. So save the unit's positions locally on our machine. We need to get that data into C Sharp code, open up the debug log menu, and here we go. So. To test this, we can copy all of it if we like. We can expand this menu, and here's all the code we've generated. I'm going to get one line, unit 4. Let's just see if it's OK. Resources load. OK, so we haven't closed off something here. The, the speech marks here after the, um, the resource. Easy enough to fix. Let's escape another speech or double quote mark. And everything else looks OK. We'll test it again in a minute after we've done the rotation. And the rotation is easy enough. Debug string plus equals, and we can say unit unit i dot transform dot Euler angles equals new vector three again. This time I'm going to copy and paste this to save save a bit of time. Paste it in here. Close it off. End the statement. Close the string. But instead of the positions array, we're now using the rotations array. It's copying it over. Okay, that's it actually. That's I think that's our full C sharp done. And you can use this technique for anything, guys. Um so I'm gonna test this out now. Let's jump in the game, restart it. Here we go. So testing this out now, getting those um those positions, the rotations in the units itself from our player preference file. And now we're logging everything out. So here we go. Our 200 units have been generated in our debug log file. We can then go ahead and copy and paste this code wherever we like. So I wouldn't recommend pasting it in this file. I'd, I'd do another one called world01 units or something. But I'm going to test and see if the syntax is correct. And it's correct. Doesn't look like there's any errors. We've defined a unit and then we've changed the Euler angles of that unit. OK guys, that's it for this video. Let's move on from the world builder now. So in this little series we've managed to randomly generate units, change their position and rotation. We've, we can save data to the local player preference file. We've looked at a way we can actually store arrays in that player preference file by using player pref x and then we can actually generate C sharp code back into the C sharp script if we wanted to. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video.